Welcome to the Dragoon 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide we'll cover all of your skills as you train to have bad skill names better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... ...to this. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally just still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you can research your job on. We will however be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 50 for Realm Reborn, level 60 for Heavensward skills, level 70 for Stormblood stuff, level 80 for Shadowbringers levels, and level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you are leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card for a video about it. And keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes, for minor potency changes or skill changes, or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Dragoon I describe thusly. It is a train. It isn't the fastest or the most flexible, but it will get you where you're going without a bump in the ride. It can also jump 500 feet into the air. Your combo strings are long, 5 attacks over 13 seconds, and you alternate between two combo strings. You can't really ever deviate from this, which is where the lack of flexibility comes in, but you at least bring a little bit of party buffing. The main thing with Dragoon is the jumps. You have a lot of them, each one with an animation lock of some kind, and are a key part of a lot of your damage. This ends up being a major sticking point for the job. You either make a mountain out of a molehill, or you get so used to the jumps you tend to forget they lock you into the animations. People in the middle are very rare, but otherwise is a DPS that rewards comfort and learning the unique brand of Weave Window Economy. To play a Lancer, you either start as one or pick the class up in the Gridania Lancers Guild after completion of your level 10 class quest as your first class. Let's get into the finer details of each skill now. Level 1, True Thrust. This is our basic attack and global cooldown for a few levels. It does 170 potency of damage to an enemy. Spam this over and over to level up a bit. Level 4, Vorpal Thrust. This is our second main attack and a combo off of True Thrust. Alone it does 100 potency of damage, but if you hit True Thrust first, your combo will light up like so, and lets Vorpal Thrust do 250 potency of damage to the target. As a result, you will always want to be hitting your combos, and all listed potencies will be assuming you are following combos like intended. Because of it being a combo, you're now going to alternate True Thrust and Vorpal Thrust over and over to kill your enemies. Remember, follow the combo for bigger damage. Level 6, Life Surge. On a 45 second cooldown, this is our first off-global or OGCD ability. It lasts for 5 seconds and ensures the next weapon skill you use will do critical damage. This is a key distinction since Dragoon also has a heavy emphasis on attacking abilities instead of weapon skills. Life Surge only ever has one main use, buff your strongest attack to guarantee it does critical damage. At this moment, and for a good few levels, this is going to be Vorpal Thrust. Weave in Life Surge after True Thrust so that your Vorpal attack will do critical damage. We'll talk about this more later, as we'll be moving Life Surge to buff other attacks. Level 8 is the first of our roll actions, Second Wind. Very nice survival and a skill I will not be going over here. All of your roll actions are extremely important. Find room for them on your bars, and if you need a discussion on them, head to the description or in the corner for a video on roll actions. There is also Leg Sweep at level 10, and Bloodbath at level 12. Level 15, Piercing Talon. This is the first of our skills that is locked behind class and job quests. You should absolutely be doing them as soon as possible. You should do all your quests. This is the only time I will bring it up verbally, but will always appear in the corner when a skill is quest locked. 
Do not touch this button, please. This is a very bad button. It does a weak 150 potency of damage, but you can use it from up to 20 yams away from the target. There are very few places that you will ever be out of range of an enemy to use this, and later levels we have much better options for distance attacking or reducing our time away from the boss entirely. Better to get into the habit of never needing to use Piercing Talon than getting used to using it a lot. The good news is, any situation where you actually do need to be out of range of an enemy for a period of time, this will not break combos, and Dragoon has some very long combos we do not want to be breaking. Level 18, Disembowel. This is the second of our combos. You combo this off of True Thrust as well, branching off away from Vorpal Thrust. It does a weak 210 potency of damage to a target. In exchange, you get a 10% damage boost for 30 seconds, called Power Surge. This is a buff you want to always be maintaining. You will be doing a decent amount less without it, and there's further benefits you will get as you level for wanting to do this combo. For now, you will want to do a Disembowel combo, then do 6 Vorpal Thrust combos to fill out the 30 second timer. We'll be seeing a lot more of this buff going forward though. At level 22, we have Faint for our next roll action. Level 26, Full Thrust. This is the third hit to our first combo. Off of Vorpal Thrust, we can use Full Thrust. This does a much higher 400 potency of damage. This is a significant increase over Vorpal Thrust, and as a result means we're going to always want to use this. And we're going to move Life Surge over to here. We want to guarantee the critical hit on Full Thrust over anything else. So anytime you use Vorpal Thrust and Life Surge is available, weave it in after so you can critical hit your Full Thrust. As for a full rotation, do Disembowel combo, then four Full Thrust combos before repeating. Level 30, Lance Charge. On a 60 second cooldown, this increases all damage we deal by 10% for 20 seconds. This should be used in a weave to up our damage. This lasts for 8 GCDs roughly, so we're going to want to use it right before a Vorpal Thrust. This allows us to get two Full Thrust into the window, but generally we want to just be using this on cooldown. It comes up very often with 60 seconds being very short, and we're going to be combining this with a lot more skills for big damage. To obtain the Dragoon job, you must first reach level 30 and complete the level 30 Lancer quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest, Self Management, which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild and the quest should be there for you. Level 30, Jump. On a 30 second cooldown, this does a unique jumping attack with a 20 yarm range that does 250 potency of damage. It's an attack we want to weave in after we have put up Lance Charge and Disembowel to double boost the damage it does, if you can. Otherwise it will be used on cooldown, which is really often with it only being a 30 second cooldown. The big thing with this is the animation. A lot of people complain about this animation for no reason because there is an animation lock tied to jumps. You do need to learn how to play around the animation lock a little. It can get you hit in ways you wouldn't have if you just didn't use it but in most cases, you can just hit jump whenever you want and be safe. It's only in Trials and Harder that you might need to consider when you are hitting jump. This is likely due to that this is not a gap closer. This causes you to jump at the enemy, then return to your starting position. Only once you have gotten back to said position will you be allowed to start moving again. So if you try to use this from far away from an enemy, you will jump at the enemy, then end up back where you started. Which, don't ever use this from super far away, you want to be using this point blank where you can for many reasons. Once you have gotten used to the animation lock even a little, you're basically golden for the rest of Dragoon. And given how they have reduced the animation lock by a lot, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. Use under buffs where you can, and use on cooldown otherwise. And for a final note, don't double weave with jumps. There's some recent potential tech with reduced animation locks, but requires basically perfect ping to not cause clipping. So just don't try it. Single weave all jumps where you can. Which, speaking of that, let's put together a basic opener that incorporates all the elements that we have talked about so far. Thanks to Dragoon being a train, it makes it relatively easy to put things into openers and make things smooth. We want to buff our best attacks and get jump in there too. True Thrust, Disembowel, True Thrust, Lance Charge, Vorpal Thrust, Life Surge, Full Thrust, Jump, 
True Thrust, Forful Thrust, Full Thrust, True Thrust, Forful Thrust, Full Thrust. We start with a disembowel combo to get the buff going, and as mentioned, allow us four full full thrust combos before needing to reapply it. We use Lance Charge after the next True Thrust because it will buff up everything through the rest of the opener, up to the third full thrust, which is significantly more powerful than anything else we currently have. After the Vorpal Thrust, we can throw out Life Surge so that our first double buffed full thrust will be guaranteed the critical hit. After this full thrust, we can get Jump Out for that to be double buffed as well. Then we just have two more full thrust combos under the Lance Charge buff before that falls off. We'll get one more full thrust beyond this before needing to refresh Disembowel. It all makes good sense and ends up being a fairly rounded out first opener, but by even level 50 things are going to change quite a lot. This is an opener mostly to get you thinking about how our openers tend to be put together. When we hit 32 we get the roll action, Arms Length. Level 35, Elusive Jump. On a 30 second cooldown, this is a utility skill that causes you to jump backwards 15 yams. It's a really quick flip that moves you pretty far away. The newbie mistake is to use this to get away from bosses. It can be used for this, and can get you into a safe position to avoid enemy AoEs. However, in most cases, a short walk is more than enough. I should be showing one of the exceptions here though. Instead of a gap creator though, you can use this as a gap closer. Anytime you need to walk, or better yet, sprint, out of range of a boss, backflip back into range. If you backflip out of range, you have to slowly walk, or sprint, 15 yams to get back. Elusive into the boss gets you in almost instantly. The thing to keep in mind is that this is always a jump backwards, which makes aiming it for the best uses difficult. Playing on legacy keyboard controls, you can press S to turn around for dodging an enemy AoE. Then you're perfectly aligned for jumping back in with Elusive. Careful you don't hit the button mid-character turn though, or just tap S. You may end up backflipping into a different direction or off the map. You can also potentially use this when the tank pulls to get to the boss sooner, or when there is a countdown, though this tends not to be super amazing or anything versus just using Sprint. Generally though, Elusive Jump is a very strong movement and dodging tool. I would have liked to show ultimate footage because I do a lot of it there, but uh... Spoilers. Level 40, Doom Spike. This is our first AoE, Area of Effect, Weapon Skill. It does a line AoE in the direction of your current target. This line is 10 yams long and decently wide, but because it is a line you have to learn how to aim it a bit, and hope your tank knows how to properly group enemies up. When there are three or more enemies, you want to be using Doom Spike over your main combos. You can take time to put up Power Surge, especially if the tank is pulling multiple groups. While running, put up Power Surge and then start spamming Doom Spike when the tank stops running. Life Surge actually does work for Doom Spike, so you'll want to be using it to get a big crit on every enemy once the tank is done. Additionally, you want to put up Lance Charge for AoE. 10% more damage on AoE is a big increase to damage. Once again, especially if there's a ton of enemies being pulled like tanks tend to do. You will also want to be using your other cooldowns like Jump, and especially Jump in AoE. It may only be a single target hit, but it's still more damage, and later on Jump leads into some very important AoE. Level 45, Spine Shatter Dive. On a 60 second cooldown, this does a 190 potency hit to a target, with a short animation lock just like Jump. It has a 20 yom range and stops you just at the edge of the enemy hitbox, working as a gap closer. It's a little bit weaker and on a longer cooldown, but it still is some free damage. But due to these factors, if you can't make Elusive Jump work, Spine Shatter ends up being an ideal gap closer. You aren't going to hold onto it just for the purpose of the gap closing effect too often though, but when the opportunity presents itself, you can easily get right back onto the enemy. Forgot to use Sprint and the tank is getting far away? Spine Shatter onto one of the enemies that is following them to catch up. Had to run far away from the boss for a mechanic? Spine Shatter back in. Otherwise, just use it on cooldown for free damage. The gap closing effects are greater when you've learned the fights already. Our final roll action comes into play with True North at level 50. Level 50, Chaos Thrust. This is the third hit to our other combo, comboing off of Disembowel. This is notable for a number of reasons. First off, this will do a small 220 potency of damage on hit. However, 
This is our first positional. If we hit the enemy from the rear, as shown in the given image, it will do 260 potency of damage. Solo we won't really go for these, but in parties we will always go for this positional. On top of that, this is a dot or damage over time effect. The dot is applied to the enemy and lasts for 24 seconds, dealing 40 potency of damage. Dots work on a server tick, so they do damage every 3 seconds. Divide the length of the dot by these ticks and you get 8 ticks, for a total 320 potency dot. In complete total, with a positional hit, that is 580 potency of damage, stronger than even full thrust. This does not mean you are going to life surge the chaos thrust. Life Surge only applies to direct damage, none of the dot. Dots can crit, but the auto crit from Life Surge is at no point applied, meaning it would only buff the 260 potency positional. Simply put, unless you're trying to rush into AoE spam, you're always going to put this up. This is such a huge hit if the enemy will live for the duration, which is partly why this is only really coming up for strong enemies like bosses. 24 seconds is a decent amount of time required to get the full potency. The timer is perfect later on though, as any boss fight that involves two bosses at once means you can chain apply Chaos Thrust back and forth between both enemies. Otherwise, just make sure you're using Chaos Thrust after Disembowel for your biggest damage. Level 50, Dragonfire Dive. On a massive 2 minute cooldown, this is an AoE jump that works as a gap closer. Short animation lock, but there. It does 300 potency to a target, and all enemies within 5 yomps of that initial target. This is stronger than even Jump itself, at least until later levels. Anytime the opportunity presents itself, buff it with Power Surge and Lance Charge for huge AoE damage. But just because it is AoE, doesn't mean you only use it for AoE. Again, this is a 300 potency hit that is currently better than Jump, which is a single target only skill. You will still use this on bosses and on cooldown, but if you can use it for AoE, make sure you do, because it's a good bit of damage. Also, the gap closing effect can be useful by accident. But now we should plop all this new stuff into an opener. We have a lot of OGCD abilities to weave in, and that's a major theme of Dragoon. We're going to try and order them in a specific way that is ideal for later on, even if not technically optimal at this point but let's go through it before we talk about it more. True Thrust, Disembowel, Lance Charge, Chaos Thrust, Jump, True Thrust, Dragonfire Dive, Vorpal Thrust, Life Surge, Full Thrust, Spine Shatter Dive, True Thrust, Vorpal Thrust, Full Thrust. We've moved Lance Charge back to buff Chaos Thrust. While Life Surge doesn't affect the dot, Lance Charge buffs all damage including the dot, so buff up the biggest hit we have over anything else. Then we start throwing out all of our jumps. The priority we will want to follow for using our jumps is Jump, Dragonfire Dive, Spine Shatter in Dead Last. We weave these essentially back to back. Even more importantly is this here, where we interrupt our jump spamming for Life Surge. This is again because we don't double weave with jumps. If your ping is absolutely perfect you could potentially life surge and spine shatter before the full thrust. But again, we usually don't. Just life surge your full thrust and spine shatter to end it off. This is the first major instance of what I call weave economy for Dragoon. We have a heavy emphasis on using a lot of OGCD abilities, with jumps taking up both windows in a weave so we have to budget space where we can, pairing as many things together as we can. While we don't see it now, we will see it ramp up a lot in later levels. Then we go back to full thrust combo spam until disembowel will run out. We'll now only do three full thrust combos now that we have chaos thrust. Chaos combo, three full thrust combos, repeat. But that is our first level cap opener, simply just going through our combos, buffing up, then throwing out the big stuff. But that gets us to our first karaoke opener. Karaoke openers are when I will be speaking the names of skills as they are used. Due to the abundance of weaving, there will be some major cutting myself off with skill names. Just remember, when a skill name starts being said, that's when the skill has been executed. True Thrust. Disembowel. Lance Charge. Chaos Thrust. Jump. True Thrust. Dragonfire Dive. 
Four full thrust. Life surge. Full thrust. Fine try to dive. True thrust. Vorpal thrust. Full thrust. But that covers a Rome Reborn. We're pretty basic so far, but things are going to ramp up with extremely important gains, starting with the Dragoon expansion, Heaven's Ward. Level 52, Battle Litany. On the long 120 second cooldown, Battle Litany has a 15 yarm radius to buff you and all allies within range. The critical hit rate of everyone is increased by 10% for 15 seconds. Notice our opener follows the idea of buff up, then throw out everything. Most everyone will be doing this, so using this as an opener will buff everyone even further. Other than making sure you are stacking buffs and only using this mid-fight, just use it on cooldown to make sure everyone is getting some big buffs. You sadly don't get to use it much, but when you do, it's very strong. Level 54, Blood of the Dragon. This is our first trait or passive ability. It boosts the power of jump to above Dragonfire Dive, now dealing 320 potency of damage to a single enemy. Spine Shatter Dive is also boosted, now doing 250 potency of damage. But this doesn't at all change how we play the job. But as an aside, you may notice the icon has been sitting on my heart bar this entire video. It used to be an ability, and we're better off than it no longer is one. But otherwise, pay it no mind. It's there for sentimental value only. Level 56, Fang and Claw. This is the fourth hit of one of our combos. It deals a 260 potency hit to a target, or 300 potency when done from the target's flank, their sides. The picture on screen shows the flanks now. Not bad, but can be executed only under the buff Fang and Claw Bayard. This buff is found on Full Thrust. The fact that it is a buff is there for a reason we'll see later, and not just a normal combo continuation. For now, do just count this as a normal combo continuation. This is a part of the full thrust combo. You're always going to hit it if you're doing single target combos. Practice up on the fact that this is a flank positional rather than a rear positional like Chaos Thrust. Level 58, Wheeling Thrust. Speaking of Chaos Thrust, this is the exact same skill as Fang and Claw, but a rear positional and given by using Chaos Thrust. Yep, this continues our Chaos combo with a fourth hit from Wheel in Motion. Now you're going to do a double rear positional, Chaos into Wheeling. Otherwise, that's all there is to it. Use this combo like normal. Level 60, Gear Skogol. On a 30 second cooldown, this is a 15 yom AoE line in the direction of your target. It does 200 potency of damage to the initial target and 140 potency to all enemies after the first. Dragonfire Dive was the start, but this really begins the trend of single target based skills that end up being also powerful AoE. With its short cooldown, we get to use Gear Skogel a lot. It's an extra button to weave into our rotation, and extremely important to get used to using. Much like Jump, this is going to lead into something much more important than just itself. But the damage it does isn't nothing. Single target, AoE, throw it out. It'll come off of cooldown here instantly with how short 30 seconds ends up being. But that already brings us to our next opener. We got four more skills we can fit in, two global and two weaves, but the general same rules apply. True Thrust, Disembowel, Lance Charge, Battle Litany, Chaos Thrust, Gas Gogol, Wheeling Thrust, Jump, True Thrust, Dragonfire Dive, Vorpal Thrust, Life Surge, Full Thrust, Spine Shatter Dive, Fang and Claw. First, let me note that our overall rotation has changed again. It will be one Chaos combo, then two Full Thrust combos. As our combos get longer, we reduce the number of Full Thrust combo loops. Going back to the beginning of the opener, we have turned the Lance Charge Weave into a double weave with Battle Litany. This gives us practice for later and gets both of our buffs running for Chaos Thrust. Going into the next weave, we don't use Jump first, because priority has changed again. Gear Skogel takes the lead for reasons that will only come into play at 70. But starting the practice here gives you muscle memory sooner. Otherwise, the rest is the same. Throw out your jumps as you get them, Life Surge on Full Thrust, and make sure you're using all four hits of your combo every time with two full thrust combos per chaos, who we are here to kill. 
the kill for Chaos, the killing made especially for Chaos, Chaos is kill, that combo, which we shall not karaoke. While this does have a double weave, the level 70 opener is going to be the best place to show off the pace for Dragoon from 60, all the way up through 80. So let's get the next step of skills going with Stormblood. Level 62, Sonic Thrust. This is our first combo extension to our AoE. No longer are we forced to just spam Doom Spike over and over and over. Being Guile with a Spear does 120 potency to all enemies, with the same AoE size as Doom Spike. However, the huge benefit of this is that you are granted Power Surge when using it. You no longer need to pre-apply it before starting AoE. You still can just because you'll do it while running and are unable to properly AoE, but it won't fall off mid-battle anymore. If trash mobs take more than 30 seconds to kill, you won't suddenly start doing 10% less damage. Make sure to always combo your Doom Spike in AoE. Stronger without the buff, but the buff being maintained is extremely nice. Also, if it wasn't obvious, move Life Surge onto this for AoE. Level 64, Lance Mastery. Our second trait is a big one. This is why Fang and Claw and Wheeling Thrust are not normal combo extensions. When doing the fourth hit of your combo, you will now proc the opposite buff. If you Chaos Thrust into Wheeling Thrust, Wheeling Thrust will now grant you Fang and Claw Baird to Fang and Claw as a fifth combo hit. If Fang and Claw is the fourth hit of the combo, Wheel and Motion is granted for a Wheeling Thrust fifth combo hit. This does not repeat, stopping after the fifth hit. On top of your combos now being five hits long, the fifth hit is boosted by 100 potency. So instead of being 260 potency with a 300 potency positional, it is up to 400 potency if you hit that positional. So now we want to be dancing around enemies a little bit at the end of combos. Rear then immediate flank, or flank into immediate rear. A small optimization note here is, if you are never going to be using full thrust, like in bosses with two targets, this fifth combo hit is the best place to use your life surge. And finally, this is our final base rotation adjustment. From now on, all the way up to level 90, we will only ever alternate combos. All five hits of the Chaos combo, all five hits of the Full Thrust combo, then repeat. Back and forth until the boss is dead. Level 66, Dragon Sight. This is going to be one of the oddest skills to get used to. While solo, you can just hit the button to increase the damage you do by 10% for 20 seconds. It's just Lance Charge on a 2 minute cooldown. That's because in parties, or even with your chocobo, you can target someone and give them a buff for 5% damage up. You get the right eye, your partner gets the left eye. Both buffs will stack with each other, so if there are two Dragoons, you can give each other your Dragon Sight buff for a 10% and a 5% buff on each of you. You want to give this to another DPS typically, your co-DPS in dungeons, and whoever seems to be doing or will do the most DPS in 8 player parties. Use the aggro list to try and determine that if you're not going with a friend. That's why this will be odd to use. You need to either make some macros to try and pick who you want to give your left eye to, or do what I do and manually pick your target every single time. It gets worse from there too, because if you make the wrong decision or your partner makes a mistake, if your partner dies, you lose your eye buff. It doesn't matter if your timer has 10 seconds left, if they die, you lose your own buff. You're going to want to be very choosy with your partner in harder content. Potentially even not the DPS if you're coming up to a mechanic everyone but you seems to keep dying to. The tanks will at least usually survive with a bone stack or something if they make a mistake. Usually. But basically, yeah, be ready for the downsides of this skill. It's a good damage buff when you have it, but getting it out can be a hassle. Level 68, Mirage Dive, Slash Hotbar, Action, Mirage Dive in quotes, make sure to use caps, Hotbar number, Slot number. I'm starting there because if you're like me, you will like this to be its own button. You can't stop me, Jericho! <laughs> Otherwise, this is an upgrade to jump. Anytime you use jump successfully, it will turn into Mirage Dive. Mirage Dive is a single target hit to a target that does 200 potency of damage. This is extremely important. We'll see why at 70. So, the very next skill we get. Otherwise, there isn't much more to it. 
Use Jump, use Mirage Dive, and use that text command if you want Mirage Dive to be its own button, like I will use. The only real note to make here is that Dive Ready, the buff that allows the use of Mirage Dive, only lasts for 15 seconds. You can delay the use if needed, and we will for openers, but there is an upper limit on how long we can hold on to it. Level 70, Life of the Dragon, and Nestrand. We have a new gauge to play with. This is the Dragon Gauge. This here is an eye. It will begin to open with every use of Mirage Dive. That is why it is such an important skill to use. After two uses of Mirage Dive, the eye will be fully opened. When the eye is open, the next use of Gas Gogol will elevate you to Life of the Dragon for 20 seconds. Life of the Dragon will transform Gears Gogol into Nestrand, a much stronger version of itself. Nestrand does 300 potency of damage to your first target, to 10 to all enemies after the first. On top of that, this has only a 10 second cooldown instead of 30 seconds. As a result, you will be using Nestrand twice within the 20 second Life of the Dragon timer. When the timer runs out, Nestrand will go back to being Gears Gogol until your next full life gauge. Other elements to note are making sure to make sure not to overcap. If you're using everything on cooldown, you shouldn't have any issues there. But if when you get things off cooldown again, don't hit Mirage Dive a third time before hitting Gears Gogol. Both are 30 second cooldowns, so this should not be an issue ever. Otherwise, this is a huge skill for Dragoon. Mirage Dive becomes extremely important and is our gateway into very strong AoE skills. And yes, that means we'll get another one later. Get into Life of the Dragon as much as you can. Now comes the major elements of our opener coming into play. Specific ordering of skills, weave economy, and so much more all coming full circle with this skill. Let's get into our 70 opener and then talk deeper of why you do all of what we do. True Thrust. Disembowel, Lance Charge, Dragon Sight, Chaos Thrust, Battle Litany, Wheeling Thrust, Gears Gogol, Fang and Claw, Jump, True Thrust, Dragonfire Dive, Vorpal Thrust, Life Surge, Mirage Dive, Full Thrust, Spine Shatter Dive, Fang and Claw, Wheeling Thrust. So, first off, this open weave window after the first True Thrust is for potions if you get into high-end content. This is the perfect spot for them. Next, we weave Lance Charge and Dragon Sight together now, since they both last 20 seconds. Dragon Sight is second, so we can give our partner the maximum amount of time with it. That half a second may matter for them. After Chaos Thrust, we battle Litany, buffing the entire party as they go all into the bulk of their openers. Now comes the min-max portion even newbies can perform. Gears Gogol is first and weaved by itself for level 90 reasons and because, with the order of Gears Gogol Jump Mirage Dive, you will never overcap your Dragon Eye. If you have two eyes stored, Gears Gogol will send you into life before you get a third eye. Further, because of things being divisible by 30 seconds, this ordering ensures every single Life of the Dragon you do will be buffed by Lance Charge which means both uses of Nestrand will be buffed, on top of everything else that has been buffed. That is how significant this subtle ordering can be, and will get even more use later. That is the weave economy of Dragoon in action, but from there it is all the same as at 60. We follow the established order up to Life Surge. This only takes a single weave, so we can double weave Mirage Dive in here. Otherwise, that is how much of a trained Dragoon is. It self-aligns min-max level techniques when you put skills in the right order. Of course, there is a lot more you can do with min-maxing the job, but it makes for a great entry point into the deeper thought processes. So let's karaoke it. We have a lot of weaving to do here, so let's expect a bit of cutoff in the name speaking, or you could just pretend I'm speaking dragon. True Thrust. Disembowel, Lance Charge, Dragon Sight, Chaos Thrust, Battle Litany, Wheeling Thrust, Chaos Gogol, Fang and Claw, Jump, True Thrust, Dragonfire Dive, Vorpal Thrust, Life Surge, Mirage Dive, Full Thrust, Spine Shatter Dive, Fang and Claw, Wheeling Thrust, 
things are going to both speed up and slow down with the next levels. What does that mean? Find out in Shadowbringers. Level 72, Kurth and Torment. This is the third hit of our AoE combo, same size and shape as our first two. It combos off of Sonic Thrust and does 150 potency of damage to all enemies hit. Make sure to do all three hits of your combo in AoE, and otherwise just enjoy the flashy animation. Also, Life Surge. Level 74, Jump Mastery and High Jump. This is a damage buff to Jump. High Jump does a 400 potency hit to a single target. Originally, this was also a speed boost, but the jump animation lock was reduced to be the same as High Jump. Level 76, Lance Mastery 2 and Raiden Thrust. This is a poorly worded tooltip for Lance Mastery, where it says it increases the potency of Vorpal Thrust to 130. That is the uncomboed potency. What it doesn't say is that this also means the comboed potency has also been increased, now with 280 potency. Similar is the Disembowel buff. Luckily, the True Thrust buff is just correct. This comes with a second upgrade, though. On your fifth combo hit, whichever one it is, you will be granted Draconian Fire for 30 seconds. While under the effect of Draconian Fire, True Thrust will be upgraded into Raiden Thrust. Raiden Thrust is a 280 potency hit that will have a further effect at 90. For now, this just means when you do your fifth hit of your combo, your next combo starts a bit stronger. Cool as hell animation, but essentially just yet another potency boost. Level 78, Life of the Dragon Mastery. Life of the Dragon only gave you 20 seconds of time, or two Nestrons upon entry. Now at level 78, you are given 30 seconds of Life of the Dragon. This means three Nestrons every single life cycle. Make sure to use all three every time, single target and AoE. That's over 900 potency of damage thanks to Nestrond. Level 80, Star Diver. And if you thought three Nestrons was good, this is way better. Anytime you enter Life of the Dragon, you are now also going to get one use of Star Diver. That's why it has a 30 second cooldown. It is a jump, a gap closer, and is a 5 yom AoE on the target's location. This does a whopping 620 potency to the first target and 434 potency to all remaining enemies hit. On just two enemies, this is now over 1,000 potency. So not only is it a huge hit to a boss, it is gigantic damage in any AoE situation. Every Life of the Dragon, use Star Diver and aim for the enemy that will lead to the biggest splash. The downside of this is its animation lock is so huge that unless you have Immaculate Ping, this is all but going to clip your GCD every single time. It sucks so much that they lowered the animation locks of all the jumps, but Star Diver gets to remain so rough. Oh, and also the name sucks? It should be called Final Chorus instead. Yeah, that one. But anyway, that's Shadowbringers. Nothing to add into the opener. Mostly some damage buffs and Star Diver. There's gonna be a little bit more to it as we get into our Endwalker skills. Level 82. Enhanced Kurth and Torment and Draconian Fury. The enhanced part of this is that Kurth and Torment will now grant us Draconian Fire, just like the fifth hit of our combos. This will allow us to use Raiden Thrust, but now also Draconian Fury. Draconian Fury is the AoE version of Raiden Thrust, replacing Doom Spike. It does a 130 potency AoE, same shape and size, we'll be back at 90. Level 84, Enhanced Spine Shatter Dive. This turns Spine Shatter Dive into a skill with charges. The moment you use one charge, the next will begin to roll the cooldown. Spine Shatter has two charges, meaning you can use it back to back. You can hold onto one for gap closing usage, or have it line up with every use of Lance Charge for increased damage. But simply, two uses of Spine Shatter. Level 86, Lance Mastery 3, Heaven's Thrust, and Chaotic Spring. This is an upgrade to Full Thrust and Chaos Thrust. Heaven's Thrust is a 480 potency spinny hit to a single target. Chaotic Spring is a bad name. It's Alamorn, guys, come on! It's literally just Alamorn! And it does 260 potency of damage, 300 potency if from the rear. The dot is upgraded to 45 potency, or a 360 potency dot. This in total will be 660 potency. Other than bad name, nothing more to add. Level 88, Enhanced Life Surge. This now turns Life Surge into a skill with charges, two of them just like Spine Shatter Dive. 
It's still a 45 second cooldown, still only going to be using it on full thrust outside of the opener. Fifth combo hit otherwise. This is notable for the opener. Level 90, Lance Mastery 4, and Wormwind Thrust. Quickly I'll mention this increases the potencies of Gaius Gogol and Astrand by 60 potency each and move on to the important bits. This is where we bring back Raiden Thrust and Draconian Fury. Our gauge has been expanded with the First Mind's Focus, the two scales on the right. Every time we use either of these skills, we are given a stack of the First Mind's Focus. When we have two stacks, we can use our level 90 skill, Worm Wind Thrust. This is the same size as Gears Gogol and Nestrand, doing a 420 potency hit to the first target and 210 potency to all enemies after the first. Once again, a strong hit for a single target that is also some powerful AoE. And we'll get to use this a little bit more often than Gears Gogol, as long as we keep up our rotation, we'll keep getting uses of it. It takes two full combos to get a use of Wormwind Thrust. In AoE, that's six GCDs. In single target, it's every 10. Which even with that long 10 GCDs needed, that's more often than Gears Gogol. So be sure to get used to your new button. Keep your ear out for the chime whenever focus is at two stacks. At worst, you'll hold it a little bit in bosses when Lance Charge is about to come off cooldown for an extra little boost, but never just hold on to it to the point that you overcap First Mind's focus. And this brings us to our final opener. We have a few things we can add, obviously, but one of the additions is more important than the others. True Thrust, Disembowel, Lance Charge, Dragon Sight, Chaotic Spring, Battle Litany, Wheeling Thrust, Gears Gogol, Life Surge, Fang and Claw, High Jump, Raiden Thrust, Dragonfire Dive, Vorpal Thrust, Life Surge, Mirage Dive, Heaven's Thrust, Spine Shatter Dive, Fang and Claw, Spine Shatter Dive, Wheeling Thrust, Raiden Thrust, Wormwind Thrust. So the big addition here is the Life Surge with Gears Gogol. We have the open Weaving Window, so we can fit it in to buff our fifth combo hit, which is second only to Fully Thrust. We don't get two Heaven's Thrust in the opener after all, so we have a free use of it available. Open Weave Window and open use of Life Surge, perfect combo. And we didn't get any combo extensions since 70, so there's still no room for Spine Chatter till the end. So we just back-to-back -back Spine Chatters to use them up and prepare for using them for every future Life Surge. Then we continue on for two more GCDs to get our second Raiden Thrust. This gives us our second scale of the First Mind's Focus, and so we can throw out Wormwind. General notes, this is a very weave-heavy opener. Obviously. There are often single weave openers for those with really bad ping, like 200 or more, but given Dragoon is a 2.5 GCD usually, you will want to at least try to learn the double weave openers. And so let's do our final karaoke opener. With this one, we'll sing the final chorus of the Dragoon song reprise, and its busiest opener for sure. True Thrust. Disembowel. Lance Charge. Dragon Sight. Chaotic Spring. Foul Litany. Wheeling Thrust. Gaze go go. Life Surge. Fang and Claw. High Jump. Raiden Thrust. Dragon Fire Dive. Vorpal Thrust. Life Surge. Mirage Dive. Heaven's Thrust. Spine Shatter Dive. Fang and Claw. Spine Shatter Dive. Wheeling Thrust. Raiden Thrust. Wormwind Thrust. And that's Dragoon! The only other thing you'll have to worry about is idiots using a bad joke about floors, while well, you do far better than any of them. Let's just hope they don't ruin the job with a rework. Haha. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Thank you for watching this Dragoon 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators, or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun in your adventures across Eorzea, and may the power of Anne and Hogsley waste to your enemies.